Hello, my name is Steven Lurson, and today I'm going to be talking about geometric art. Welcome to my workstation today. So a little uh, garden here. Pepper plants, red bell pepper. Did you know jalapenos get red? Anyway, so it brings us to uh, our workstation. There are countless assumptions and stereotypes about geometric art and how it's made. But in art, the reality is that there are no boundaries. You make what you want, how you want. First, let me establish a working definition of what I mean when I say geometric art. When I say geometric art, I mean any 2 or 3D work of art that incorporates sharp, clean edge shapes. It doesn't have to be exclusively geometric. It could be primarily whimsical uh, with some geometric detailing and it would still qualify in my book. I think the root of what I mean is that uh, I like it when the shapes are, when they're created, polygons of any type or circles, ellipses, etc. The artist should have the ability to make them really clean and crisp if he or she wants to. It's one thing if you paint, it's one thing if when you paint you intentionally make your square with fuzzy edges because that's what you want. It's different if you try to make them clean and they come out sloppy. And that's what this video is all about. I'm going to show you a method of creating clean shapes. Once you have the knowledge and power to do this method, you may decide you want shapes that are not so rigid, and that's cool. I'm just giving you the tool to get the job done. So let's just go ahead and start with some of the uh, tools that I have out here. I have a ruler. This technically is called a rolling ruler because it does have the ability to roll. So if I started a straight line there, I could roll it forward, make another line, roll it forward, and it's just easier to make parallel lines. This is a carpenter's uh, triangle ruler. It has uh, some measurements, it has some cutout circles, use it as a stencil. Um, here is a compass. I use this a lot anytime I'm making uh, perfect circles. These are pretty easy to, once you figure out how to use it, it makes, I mean, you can get, it becomes second nature. One point has a little sharp uh, point that's supposed to dig into its uh, foundation. The other has the pencil or some even have ink uh, pens and whatnot. You just spin it around. Um, it can be adjusted with this roller. Um, let's see. I have a, another pencil, just mechanical pencil, I love those, they're always sharp. Um, some of the, our best, our favorite pens at the studio are the Faber-Castell. Um, we also have Sharpies among others. Uh, let's see, tape, you'll be using this uh, today, if or at least, and I will be. Uh, we also have some golden regular matte gel, uh, I have this, um, bought that many years ago, it's a large container. so. Um, that's lasted me. Um, so, now some of the basics with uh, geometric art. You'll need to start off by dividing up your... This is a canvas panel, uh, 11 by 14. You could do it on paper. You could do it on a, anything you want. Um, whenever you are using rulers, it is much easier if you're working on a harder surface. Uh, because the, a normal canvas is going to offer uh, this flex that if you're drawing on it, it makes it harder. So I know that it's 11 by 14, so I'm going to go ahead and create a grid um, every... I'm going to cut it in half, then in quarters, then in eighths, and uh, be right back whenever I finish making this grid. Alright, so I don't know if you can see this or not, but I have divided the canvas panel in one half and one half, and then again, ha each of that in half. So I have one quarter, one half, three quarters on both orientations. So instead of just doing every inch, which would make little uh, one inch blocks or something like that, which would be squares, these, because I divided it in half, I'm making each rectangle proportionate to the whole. So it's more, instead of them being a rectangular grid, I mean, excuse, excuse me, instead of it being a square grid, it's a rectangular grid. So now that I have that, I can go ahead and start doing some diagonals. Basically, I'm just drawing diagonals through intersections. Um, and this could be somewhat arbitrary, 
because now that you have your grids down, as long as you're drawing straight through intersections, uh, you will be dividing accurately. So it will all make sense. I'm just going to do this rather quickly. Okay, so now I have diamonds in here and squares. So that's enough division for me. That's enough division. I'm going to bring this up to the point where you can see what I've done. So now that I have diamonds and squares, now I'm going to show you a couple different ways of filling that in. Now, intuitively, you might just think, oh, I need to paint this in uh, with a paintbrush and paint. Well, yes, I mean, that does work. If you use a tiny paintbrush, it does work to go in there. But the, the problem is getting crisp edging. So that is where the tape comes in. Make sure you have enough to span the whole shape. And there's a tool called burnishing, and that is whenever you rub the tape or anything down until you know that it has, has adhered. Now, if I were to go straight into painting onto this, even though I burnished it, because this canvas panel um, on the micro level is w very wavy because of the fi fabric of the canvas, um, it's not going to be clean. It, this will bleed. So this is my secret. If you're wanting it to not bleed, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my paint ready so that it's ready and wet, and then I'm going to paint a clear coat of acrylic regular gel uh, on here. What that's going to do is that's going to be the part that bleeds, and we won't see it in the end because it's clear. So then while it's wet, I paint over with wet paint, which can't bleed because that all those gaps have already been blocked with a clear filler, which is that. So I'll be right back once my paints are prepped, uh, and we will go ahead and knock it out. We'll show you how this works. Okay, so I got some uh, diarylide yellow, uh, some bright cadmium. All these are golden colors. Cadmium, um, yellow light, and quinacridone magenta. I think that those colors go very well together. But remember, before I just put the paint right around the tape in that area, I'm going to go ahead with my wet brush and paint a clear coat along the tape. This is going to essentially seal in every little gap that the tape is not blocking. Now, time is of the essence because you don't want to, um, you don't want to seal the tape down you want that to stay wet. So right into it, I'm not going to clean my brush, I'm going to go right into painting right over that tape because now it's sealed. It's not going to bleed. And the actual color doesn't have to be, uh, what do you call it? It can be more organic. It doesn't have to be super geometric on the inside because the shape itself is geometric. Now that we've done this, stick my brush over there, peel it right up before it's dry, and that is perfect geometrical, clean, clean edge, nice, crisp. You could do this uh, on top of a painting, you could do it underneath a painting. Now the key was that I peeled the tape up while it was all still wet, and also uh, I sealed it underneath that paint is regular gel mat uh, which blocked any bleeding. If you, if you skip that step then it will most likely bleed on you even though I use painter's tape. Uh, so that's just one of my secrets. So I hope you enjoyed that. Now you could uh, blow dry that if you wanted to move on to the next uh, level or make smaller triangles. All of that is based on how much work you want to put into it. Um, but with that being said now you know how to take this and multiply it over anything. So I thank you very much for joining me today. Um, 
and I hope you have a great day.